Good afternoon, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about the first year in recovery, what to expect from the first year in recovery. This is going to be a really good segment and this segment coming directly to you from Take Your Life Back. But before we go there, let's say hello to Dr. Luis Gonzalez and give him a shout out at 844-414-8444. You can reach him at www.startingpointmn.com. That's startingpointmn.com. The MN stands for Minnesota folks. Reach out to him if you need help to go from your addiction to your recovery. He will act as the bridge. He will work with you 24 hours at a time. He will work for you for today and tomorrow. He will never ever talk about your past. Go to him to get whatever coaching that you need for your addiction. He will again walk with you from your addiction to your recovery. He will also, on the other side of his business, turn you into an addiction recovery coach. If you possess passion, personality, and professionalism, and you have some sort of addiction in your background, whether it being your own or from someone else in your family that maybe you have helped, call him at 844-414-8444. You can also go to my websites, which are at www.clearviews.info, C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Clear Views is for information on addiction and recovery. There are tons and tons of articles written by doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists. Tons, and I mean tons of videos, directed, authored, and produced by myself and my wife Casey or otherwise known as Catherine we call her Casey but it's Catherine she is my producer she helps me come up with the ideas for all my shows in conjunction with her my her and myself we create these videos daily the only day we don't create a video is on Thursdays and that is throwback Thursday folks yesterday I walked the streets in Mastic Beach and got the stories from real people and they told their real stories to you. You hopefully got to hear them yesterday during the interviews. They will be on this video. You probably have heard them by now because they're in the beginning of this video. But those are people in Master Beach on Neighborhood Road that I talk to every Sunday between the hours 11 and 12 and they tell me their stories whether it's drugs, alcohol, whatever stories they might want to tell me. I want to bring it into your living room, into your kitchen to have you here that there are people out there that have real stories. I will not edit anything. Uh, if, if it's too graphic or it has too much profanity, I will not even air it. But if you do hear one or two uh, words that are not uh, soothing to the ears, I will not edit that because those are the real stories coming from the real people in a small community of Mastic Beach. Folks, I also have my other website, like, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, where I will coach you. I will take you from your addiction to your recovery 24 hours at a time, and we will only tackle each day at a time. I, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, will never, ever talk about your past. In conjunction with Dr. Luis Gonzalez, myself, and soon to be Annie Welch. She is uh, just about ready to take her final exam. Soon to be, she will also be an addiction recovery coach. There are thousands of us here in the United States and millions probably globally. I just want to give a shout out to Annie Walsh. I wish her nothing but good luck on her final exam, and I know she will do well. And I congratulate her and welcome her into the addiction recovery coaching uh, career that she chose through Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444. Folks, let's dive right into this. Today, this is coming from uh, the, uh, I believe it's from the CDC, and it's called the first year in recovery, what to expect. As usual, you can tell when I speak from my heart, and, but there are times when I have to read, so uh, sometimes you'll have a little humor because I might mispronounce a word or two, uh, but I also will be glancing left, right, up, and down uh, for the reading material, so bear with me. But I don't have teleprompts uh, like um, uh, President uh, Obama has. Um, but uh, maybe with enough viewers eventually I will uh, have the budget to do that. Certainly would be nice to have a 46 inch or 66, uh, 60 inch TV straight behind my laptop and I can actually read everything from there. But for now, this is my real story from me to you coming from the CDC. When you complete treatment for substance abuse or any other addictive behavior and are beginning your recovery, you probably you, you, you are probably a little familiar with what to expect during those first few days and weeks. 
but having learned a bit about what will possibly happen and actually living it are two different things. It's, you know, I always say it's almost like on-job training. When you are fighting recovery or addiction and you're learning how to recover, every day is a new learning experience. It's something that you don't learn out of a textbook. And that was one of the reasons I didn't agree with AA because it was just too textbook formatted. Then there's the whole what happens for the rest of the first year what that can have you uh, d d think about what to do and how to contend with it. What's the best way to sort it all out, you might be asking. Is there some kind of roadmap or gui guidebook that can let you know which direction to turn? What can you expect in the first year of recovery? Folks, that's what coaches are here for, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, like myself, like soon-to-be Annie Welch. That is what we're here for. We are all here to help you direct you on the roadmap map of recovery. Everyone is different. You've heard this before and it's all well worth repeating. Exactly how you recover, recovery progresses will be different from everyone else who is in recovery. Everybody has their own little way of doing it. Just as your treatment pro progressed according to a tailored program specifically designed for you, it's reasonably to expect that uh, according to um, a pace of your recovery that you said, you will very much depend on a certain roadmap that map that will be having to uh, be designated either by yourself if you want to do that or you can certainly find somebody like an addiction recovery coach or AA or a treatment center again. Uh, in other words, while you can look at how others are doing it, you also need to worry about how you are going to do it. Don't be a bystander during a game. Be a participant during the game. With that in mind, however, there are some phases of recovery during the first year that are fairly common. They may not occur according to the to the calendar, but sooner or later, everyone in, in a recovery will likely experience them, and we will discuss them. Some may go through the recovery stages more than once. If they slip and relapse or fail to do the required work, uh, they need to learn how to dust your knees, pull yourself up, take yourself in and turn and move on. And you need to move forward. You can never go back to the old abusive ways. One of the biggest things that is very, very common with people that possibly uh, in the first year of recovery uh, might run into is depression. Depression is very common. Many people experience feelings of depression, the so-called blues. You know, blues, uh, they, they have a tendency of bringing people back to drinking or doing drugs. And, you know, we need to honestly go on a positive thought of mind. Everything in life, put recovery and addiction aside, has to have a positive impact. It has to have a positive impact on you and on others. Many people experience feelings of depression, the so-called blues, during the early stages of recovery, generally considered to be the first year in recovery. That is the hardest. Actually, the first month is the hardest. But as time goes on, the first year does become easier. When depression occurs, it can not only interfere with your recovery, but also your ability to participate in treatment. Because, um, for an example, you know, it's almost like uh, your, your addiction it's almost like a jail sentence for you and you get a Dear John letter. Well, when you're going through recovery, it's almost like you're stuck in a place where everything has to be positive and then suddenly you start feeling depressed and, 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 and you don't even know which way to turn. And it's the same analogy when you get a Dear John letter when you're either in jail or in the military. You don't know which direction to turn. So you need to depend uh, on other people and there's no reason that you shouldn't. Let's take a particular depressive symptom poor concentration. If you have that symptom as a result of depression, you may be unable to have more difficulty in paying attention to a group therapy session or listening to another 12-step group member who is sharing a personal experience during that fellowship meeting because your mind is not in the AA classroom setting. Your mind is not uh, paying attention to whoever might be speaking. So obviously if you're not paying attention, your mind's not with it, you're not getting the treatment information that you so desperately need. Don't be overly distressed about feeling blue during the first few weeks of recovery. And and I will, you know, I agree with that because the first couple of weeks, with me it wasn't more, it wasn't the depression, it was more the temptation. So while it is normal to experience some periods of sadness of being blue in the early 
uh, days of recovery, it should pass within a few weeks. As you get more involved and active in working your recovery, your thoughts will tend to be focused more on the doing and less on the thinking of the negative depression or protect, depressive thoughts. You will concentrate more on the positive things, and we're going to discuss some of those positive things because you know what? When you think positive, you get positive. But if, you, if you're if you one of those people, and I know I have them in my audience, uh, the naysayers in life that always look for a negative, no matter what the situation is, they look for that negative, you will get negative results with negative thinking. Positive re uh, thinking, positive results. Nine months to a year. What does that mean? After three quarters of a year and moving on up to a one-year block in recovery, things should be smoothed out quite a bit. By now, you know the danger signs, the people, places, and things you have to avoid because of their association with the addiction. Bars, hangouts, corner street hangouts. You know when you pushed yourself too hard and need to back off a bit. Recognizing that your recovery always, and I mean always come first because there is nobody that can help you with your recovery other than yourself. So if you put anything else in front of that and you relapse, you are the only person that can help yourself. So put your recovery as your number one priority every day. Because you have to worry about the relapse dangers, although it's more likely to occur the first 90 days of recovery, but relapse can happen, I know people, years later. The danger of relapse is always there. The only way to guard against relapse is to actively work your recovery each day. I work them with my videos, whether it's the beginning of the preparation for the video, video like all this material, reading material, the video itself and the end, or my interviews, or my websites, or my groups. Those are actively every day participated by me. This is my recovery. This is how I battle my addiction. This is equivalent, if not a better method than AA, if not, depending on who you ask. For me, it is better because obviously I utilize it, and if AA was better, I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, where were we? It doesn't matter if it's the first month or month nine. When stuff happens, it sometimes happens all at once. You ever get like five bucks in your pocket and you say, wow, I finally can save some? And then you get hammered with a couple bills that equals to 50 bucks in a minus, and now you're $45 in a minus. You don't even have that $5. Well, that's what that means. When things happen, they can happen all at once. And I do believe things do happen in three, so be careful. I mean, that's my thought. The first year sobriety, there's no question that the first year of sobriety can be extremely an, an alternative time of elation. In other words, you should be happy about it. Depression, delight, or confusion, those are the things you should be a little worried about. Um, depression and confusion are, are negatives in this equation. The uh, Being elated is great and the delighted is great too, but you have to worry about the negative aspects. You may go from being completely thrown by events and challenges to being Better able to cope with daily stress opportunities. Learning how to deal with the anger, overcome isolation, find joy in learning new things and meeting new people, even learning how to experience and appreciate overwhelmingly and completely unexpectedly. Happiness takes quite a bit of doing. Like anything, learning how to ride a bike, you have to put time into learning. Learning uh, how going to college and earning a degree, it takes four years. Um, Learning how to be a, uh, uh, a better husband takes many years, better wife takes many years, how to be a great father and mother takes years sometimes. Nothing is given to us other than um, our creation by the Lord. We were born with a brain, we were born with a body. It is what we utilize. We are just a vessel that God created and gave us a soul and a mind, but we need to utilize what God gave us and mature it and expand the horizons on it. But everything takes creation on your part. Everything takes education on your part. Addiction, when you learn to live with it, you need to educate yourself daily because if you don't, you will have a relapse. Getting acquainted with schedules. Becoming accustomed to scheduling your time is critically important to getting your recovery jump started. At first, there's a 12-step meetings or other methods that you will need to put on your daily agenda. I 
for one thing, have all my videos pre-planned a week ahead of time. I have my interviews, not the people in the interviews, but the interviews themselves pre-planned on location, time, day. I have um, uh, my websites when I work on them pre-planned. So everything has to have an agenda and they have to be daily agendas, 24-hour agendas. Since this is an all new period of sobriety for you, it's only natural that you feel confused, a little disoriented, fearful of what you're doing, what wrong thing you might be doing, unsure what to do, when, even how to get through the day. That's when you need the support of somebody who has been sober a little longer than you, possibly. Uh, that's when you also can rely on a coach, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez, myself, and soon to be Annie, and other thousands of people. That's where we all come in hand. We remember my websites, Clear Views and Clear Reform. Clear stands for Community Lessons and Power Addiction Recovery. We as a community, all of us, need to work with each other to make us all whole, to bring us all to blossom us into a addiction recovery phase. And and it's not just in the addiction category, it's, it's humans as whole as such. We as a community need to help each other. Schedule them three times a day for the first few weeks. What they're talking about and what I'm going to explain to you is what this is AA saying that you should schedule your meetings a few times each day. Folks, I honestly, and this is not in any way blown up, I think about my addiction, this is no lie, about 18 hours every day. It's an average, I'm just saying that because I, I'm thinking to myself, what is it that I do daily? The videos, preparation, video, finished. Then the work on my channels on YouTube. Then the work on my Google, my Twitter, my Facebook pages. Then the work on my web pages. These are all related to addiction recovery. You're talking a lot of, a lot of hours. So if you minimally want to start with three times a day, perfect. Um, a good new, uh, the good news is that there are 12-step groups everywhere in all 50 states and many in foreign countries. So if you're watching me, uh, I know I have a military following. Uh, you folks in some of the uh, NATO countries might be watching me or some of the uh, uh, Middle Eastern countries might be watching me and some even down in uh, 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 southern from me, uh, in the southern states that is, might be watching me. But AA is everywhere. It's been around since 1936. I never ever say it's not going to work for you because it probably could. But it depends on you. Me, I needed something different. Another vital step in your early weeks of recovery is to find a sponsor, which we just spoke about, or an addiction coach, which we all just spoke about. Go to a few me meetings and see how you relate to various individuals that you can, you might consider asking to be your sponsor. And folks, if you find a sponsor and you don't feel comfortable with that sponsor, by all means, be politically correct, but fire your sponsor. And I say that as a joke to fire part, but find a different sponsor. Why do you need a sponsor or a coach so soon? That's a good question because from day one, you need to have a crutch, somebody to lean on, somebody to go to advice, somebody that you can talk to that possibly knows what you're going through. Your sponsor or your coach is not your therapist, and I'm not. However, and However, and does undertake the responsibility, you still need to see your therapist if you want to continue care, after care as part of your overall treatment. If you have issues from your past, you need to see a counselor and a therapist. I am here as your coach. A sponsor is there as somebody to lean on. That's what we do. If not, you do have some issues still to work out. Call your treatment facility and ask for a referral if you cannot find a therapist or a counselor. Don't forget that your return home has caused a major shift in family situation. People are, might look at you a little differently, and that's okay. You deal with it. Now that you come home, there is a daily routine of the family that may factor into your recovery schedule. You can't allow your recovery to be jeopardized because you feel obligated to jump right back into the situation that you are not prepared to jump back into. Do not go into the old ways again. Caution. To avoid, to avoid hard feelings and misunderstandings, have a conversation with your spouse, your partner, right away about the importance of keeping to your recovery schedule. 
Folks, I put my recovery, I mean, I put my wife always first. But my wife and my recovery are equal. They are equal. I need to make sure that I constantly push myself towards my recovery. Because nobody else will for me. And I'm telling you folks right now, do not expect somebody to keep pushing you. Because people don't want to have to push you. This is something that you, yes you, need to do on your own. Schedules in the first three months will start becoming easier to deal with after the first few weeks. If you have a job, you're likely to be returning to it shortly after you return home from the treatment center. This will probably be somewhat stressful and there are a lot of conflicting emotions you will likely encounter when you get back to your job and interact with your boss and co-workers. Give yourself time to get readjusted and don't judge uh, how they might react. Just go with the flow, smile, and think positive. Don't go overboard by tackling projects and assignments all at once. Folks, that's one of my biggest problems. I see so many things going on sometimes in my own life with projects and things to do and deadlines and uh, customer service on, for the optical side of my business that I sometimes get overwhelmed but I'm getting better and I'm learning how to deal with that a little better. And we're going to talk about time management in another segment, another show of taking your life back. Don't ever um, become overconfident you need to avoid overconfidence. When you're about six months into your recovery, if things have been going fairly smoothly for you, it's quite possible that you might start to feel a little bit overconfident. Don't become cocky. You may think, for example, that you can take a chance and go out with your former drinking buddies again. You can't. I don't think you ever can unless they accept the fact, and you do not drink alcohol, accept the fact that you don't uh, have to drink to have a good time with your buddies. Go back to one of my videos, 10 mocktails. A mocktail is a cocktail that mocks a cocktail with no alcohol. The recipes are right there. Uh, you may think, for an example, that you can take a chance and go out to your former drinking buddies again just once. You may tell yourself that you'll just have a coffee or a sparkling water, but the odds that you will be able to stick to this and resolve uh, this situation are slim to zero to none don't be tempted it's simply not worth the risk because once you have a relapse you start all over I'm not saying you lost anything because you only gained some sort of sobriety but but the psych psychological warfare that it, that will play on you because the plateaus that you reach each and every 24 hours you read uh, continue sobriety are milestones that you have reached that you put so much hard work daily Folks, if I decided to even drink one time in my life again, I would lose everything that I've sweat to create. I have created a couple websites, different pages. I have uh, YouTube uh, uh, acknowledging the fact that I get lots of uh, clicks. Uh, they that we now have commercials on them, and then per click, I get a certain uh, amount of pennies. But they add up after a couple clicks. But I've worked so hard to create this, but would I not, if I even had a drink and got on this video in front of this camera tomorrow, be a hypocrite to sit here and tell you what not to do if I'm doing it? Shame on me if I did that, and I won't do that. So this is the first year in recovery, what to expect. You have to know that everyone is different. You've heard this before and it's well worth repeating. Ex exactly how your rec recovery progresses will be different from everyone else who is in recovery. Everybody has a different action plan. You might use AA and its 12-step program and then 90 meetings in 90 days and they're reading out of the big book. You might do that. You might utilize my methods, which would be uh, do directly working off websites, educating yourselves through videos, going hitting the streets and interviewing people, creating your own videos. You might do that or you might be at a point where you need to go into an inpatient or outpatient treatment center. Whatever treatment you choose to utilize, you need to know that it's different for everybody. But folks, what it really comes down to, two things. If it's AA, my methods, whatever methods or treatments, two things have to happen. Number one is you have to reach to your higher power no matter which way you want to go for your treatment. And number two is that we all reach the goal, the goal of sobriety. 
but you can have God in your life and not worry about addiction. But you cannot have an addiction and learn to live with it without having God. God has to guide and direct you because if you knew how to guide and direct your life so good, how, and I repeat, how did it crumble around you? How did it allow you to get so addicted uncontrollably that you finally hit rock bottom and you had to reach to God in the first place? Remember the analogy. It's not even an analogy. It's a, state. It's a true fact, actually. God created you as a perfect human. It is what your parents did with you from the ages of 0 to 18 and what you did from 18 and beyond that creates your book of life. Every year in your life is a chapter in your book of life. Your parents are designated by God to help you write your chapters between zero birth and 18. Then at 18 you run and just keep writing the other chapters. Remember folks, you have the beginning of the book and the end, your birth and your, your um, death. What's in between are the most important chapters that you can write. And what's here today October 14th, 2014, and here on to your death are the most important because you can't change the past. But you can today, October 14th, 2014, start changing the future. That is the wonderful thing. And that's the wonderful thing about God that He is willing to forgive no matter what you've done. As long as you ask for forgiveness and His guidance and direction. As long as you live your life in a, in a way that God will... Uh, help you guide and direct you and as long as you have learned that you need no matter what to be guided and directed it all starts in your home if you're a parent watching me or a grandparent on how you raise your children how their chapters in their book from 0 to 18 will end up if you're a grandparent or a grandparent or legal guardian and you do smoke and drink and use profanity and physically abuse your partner in front of your children, you are creating those chapters in their book of life between 0 and 18 to include smoking, drinking, profanity, and physical abuse. You're creating that in their book. So when they, at 18, take over and write their own chapters, they will continue writing exactly what they've seen because children are... Uh, like monkey see monkey do that's the theory they look at you as their hero and their role model so if you drink smoke use profanity and physically abuse in front of your children for 18 years expect them to go out in the open into society and blend right in because that's what they'll be most comfortable with out there because you created that but let's put it on the other hand turn it around and you showed nothing but love respect, compassion, and emotion in your own household for the first 18 years you have created 18 chapters in your children's grandchildren's book of life that included love, respect, emotion, and compassion. So when they go out hopefully that's what they'll take along. Hopefully. But if they veer off and go a separate way after 18 know this that you have done everything possible to be that role model that God wanted you to be. To be the hero that the children see in you. But don't let the children be camouflaged thinking that you're a hero if you're smoking, drinking, using profanity, or physically abusing someone. If you need to smoke, smoke outside. If you need to drink, do it outside your home. If you need to use that trashy bathroom language, do it in the bathroom. Better that, don't do it at all in the house. And if you physically abuse, whether it's your husband, wife, partner, grandparents, children, you need therapy and counseling. And if you are watching, you're the victim of physical abuse, you need to call the authorities, 911, immediately. It is better to have your loved one that is abusing you taken out in handcuffs, seek treatment, and hopefully become better and come back to you as a whole person, a new person, than to have the authorities come to your home and take you out in the body bag. That is irreversible. Death cannot come back. Only Jesus came back to life. You will not. Not in this lifetime, at least. You will not. 
So if you're being physically abused and your so-called so loved one is doing it to you, call the authorities right now. Call the authorities. Be the role model. Help write your book. I want to go over my book really quick because I haven't said it in a long time and I need to constantly let people know, my new viewers. My book of life started in 1961 in Göttingen, Germany. I was born there. My book of life then took me to the next chapters into the United States. Next chapters back to Germany to grow up a little bit, going to school. Next chapters coming back to Long Island, New York. 1972 I came back. Came back as a 11 year old boy. Then my parents continue writing my book of my chapters in my book of life. The age of 17, I took over my chapters in my book of life. I went into college, 1981, into the Marine Corps. In 1981, while I was in the Marine Corps, my chapter in my book of life included a chaplain asking me to become a lay reader. A lay reader is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain like an addiction coach between addiction and recovery. During my time in boot camp, I was the lay reader to the chaplain. I think I can clearly say it today that it was God's plan in 1981 to mold me as the years go on, and I'll explain why, into becoming this addiction coach. This, today, me. 1981 lay reader. 1982, overseas a few times on um, um, NATO floats, which are Navy vessels. 1983, we were deployed to the Mediterranean float into Beirut, Lebanon. October 1983, we had a barracks bombing. God spared my life. Yes, I was injured. Yes, they flew me onto a ship and sewed me up. But God spared me. 1983, because he had bigger plans for me. My chapters in my book of life, I'm going to fast forward from 83 now to 2009, always included that I was good to other people. I was always warm-hearted and always wanted to help. But, but, included alcoholism. 2009, what, again, my job, what does it entail? It's helping others. Every month I would fly from Virginia to Alaska for 10 to 12 days into the Arctic Circle providing eye care and eyewear to Eskimos and veterans up there. That's what I would do. But in 2009, another accident. Again, God spared me from certain death. Three years of physical therapy and workman's comp and during those three years my alcoholism became worse because I now wasn't working. I was home watching TV and eating potato chips and drinking over and over and over, escalating from a couple shots a day to up to 15 shots of vodka a day. 2011, God tested me, tapped me on my shoulder, said, continue, please continue helping others. So my wife and I created Master Beach Outreach 2011. And what that was is to help the elder Folks, the handicapped folks and the poor people, help them with food, services, and uh, clothing. But my alcoholism was more important to me than helping. Deep down inside, yes, there was a good Ralph helping people, but the alcoholism was out of there. So God continuously let me write my own chapters. 2013, my whole life crashed around me, literally literally crumbled because I knew I could not keep going at the pace I was going with the drinking without either overdosing or killing myself. It is now 2013 that I reached up to God and I asked for guidance and direction. It was then that God finally took that shield he protected around me or he had around me to protect me from certain death. Because besides the two accidents I had, I could have had two to three overdoses. He protected me at least four or five times from certain death. And he said, Ralph, now that you've reached out to me and you've admitted and acknowledged you have a disease and that you want to learn to live with it and you want to fight it, now I want you to seek what I told you in 1981 
you would do for the rest of your life. Yes, I've been in the optical field for 30 years, but that is not my calling. That is a job. My calling is to go out and help those who have the same disease I have, the same addictions that I have, and other addictions like uh, uh, drugs. Out of nowhere, God introduced me to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point at 844 Out of nowhere. I'm in New York and he's in Minnesota. Out of nowhere. Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point and I chatted a few times and I decided to go through his educational program. Finished it. Graduated. And God's big plan in 81 happened in 2014. And I sit here humbly in front of you to tell you that God in 1981 knew that I was going to be an addiction recovery coach. Because when I was in 81, I lay reader, that is an equivalent to an addiction recovery coach. A lay reader and addiction recovery coach are so similar because we don't just concentrate on just addiction or just on the spiritual side. We concentrate on the life coaching, on the positive coaching, and eliminating negative coaching. That was God's plan for me. That are the chapters that are in my book of life. What are your chapters going to be like today, starting October 14, 2014, and on? Will you start rewriting the chapters? Or can I even help you write some of your chapters? And if I can, you can text me at 631-599-0218. You can email me at clearreform, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M dot com. Uh, excuse me, at yahoo.com. You can call me at 844-405-HELP. You can go on any one of my pages. I have three pages and an open group just on Facebook alone, and that is Clear Views, Clear Reform, uh, and uh, on uh, the open group, it's Clear Reform. You can Twitter, Dogpile, Dig, Google, Yahoo. Uh, YouTube has 163 videos. Just type in my name, R-A-L-F. Friedrichs, F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S in, in uh, YouTube. And I do ask for anyone that watches these videos, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please, just do that for me. Because it is important that each and every video has an impact on one other person other than me. I want to be able to save two people daily. And I guarantee you I save myself daily. Just one other person. Out of the thousands that watch me, if I could just save one, I would be more than happy if I saved everyone. But, realistically, just if I can help one other person, if I just send that one message to one person that hits home, that is important. When you go to bed tonight, folks, take when you take your shoes, your sneakers, your slippers off, and you put them by the edge of your bed, so tomorrow morning you can get right back into them. Do me a favor and push your shoes, sneakers, or slippers under your bed, halfway under. You're probably saying, well, why? Because tomorrow morning when you wake up and you want to go and get those shoes, sneakers, or slippers, you need to go on your knees and pull them from under your bed. And while you're on your knees, thank your Lord, your God, for another day that he is allowing you on this beautiful earth. For every breath you take, folks, there's someone somewhere taking their last breath. As I'm sitting here doing this video, people are just taking their last breath. For every time you blink or open and close your eyes, there's somebody closing your eyes for the last time. And folks, I keep telling everyone, you have to start learning to share with others. When I say learning, I'm not saying it's an educational thing, but when I say learning, it's because we have so much individually that we own compared to some of the third world countries that if we just gave one percent of what we have to somebody who has nothing not only will it build up your self-esteem not only will it make you feel better not only will God appreciate you for doing it but you just might have made somebody else's life that one percent better just by sharing a little bit if you have a loaf of bread and you know you're only going to eat a half a loaf and then the other loaf ends up in the garbage, why not give that half a loaf to someone? If you have a dollar or two, give it to someone in need. If you see an old 
neighbor trying to cut their grass, go out there and help them. When I say share, it doesn't have to be in uh, monetary. It doesn't have to be in merchandise. I'm talking about share. It could be uh, in, in working for them for free. Share you with them. Share you with them. My wife and I just came back and we saw a movie today. And the movie was called, I believe, The Judge. Morton Downey Jr. And uh, I forget the other actors. It's a popular actor. But anyway, quite sad. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because Morton Downey Jr. is one of the most inspirational recovered or people who are going through recovery of addiction. Most inspirational. He's an idol to me because I look at myself like him. Because we, and for me to put myself on his level, is a little scary, but I'm going to. I'm going to make that leap. We, Morton Downey Jr. and myself, are perfect proof how you can turn your life around because it's all here mind and body and your higher power that's all it is there is no book that can make you stop drinking and doing drugs there is no treatment that can make you ha uh, stop doing alcohol or, or doing drugs it is only you that can do it only you you are the captain of this vessel, your body. That's your vessel. You are the captain. What you do with your body is controlled by you. No matter what disease, unless it's a terminal disease, it's fightable. You can fight addiction. But you need to have a soldier on your side, and that is God. You need to have him on your side. He will change your whole life like you wouldn't even, I, I couldn't even imagine to tell you. Folks, I used to be one of these people that used to look at other people that always said I depend on God for anything, paying my bills, or I, I should really say it this way, they always more or less say we'll pray about it. Things always work out with God now if you'd like, come on. You think Cablevision's going to really take that as a payment? But folks, I will tell you right now. As I sit here, that ever since I started reaching out to God, things are happening left and right in my life that I know surely would never have happened. They could be very small or they can be big, but they're only possible through the power of God. It's funny because my sister was in the car with my mother and they were looking at one of my videos and my sister said, Ralph, are you a preacher? I am not a preacher. What I am here to tell you is that God has to be part of your life with addiction or not he has to be part of your life he has to be part of your life it's simple we can only control so much in our life I truly believe that even people that have stage 4 cancer that are given a couple months still have that little hope that there might be a miracle from God because God is capable of doing it I truly believe that you put your faith in God, and you'll be amazed of the difference in your life. You know, I, I sit here and I, I think to myself, how else can I really say it? But there isn't any other way to say it. If you put your faith in God, you will see overflowing differences in your life. I am not a preacher, but I am a believer. And I truly believe that your addiction will be beat, you will live with it, as long as you do to two things, and that is for you to have the drive to do it, the willpower to do it, and you include the Almighty God. Those two will make you a better person. That, I promise you. If each and every day you let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, you will see nothing but positive results. And the same goes with God. If you let your God into your heart and into your home, you will see nothing but overflowing differences in your life. And for the naysayers around you and the negative people around you, you need to avoid them because negative people give negative results. 
Your day is as good as you want it to be each and every day. Nobody dictates how your day should go. Nobody tells you you have to drink. Nobody tells you you have to smoke crack. Only you do that. As much as you only you do that, only you can stop it. Let today, October 14th, be the best day of the rest of your life. Let today, October 14th, be the day I help you take your life back. Remember, a sober today guarantees you a better tomorrow. When the sunshine and God in your heart and your home, you will get nothing but positive results. That, I promise you. That, I promise you. I hope today's segment was quite interesting for you, and I hope to God that there is one other person besides me that I impacted with my video, because I really, truly need for anyone out there to be impacted. The only way I know any impacts are out there from my videos is a simple text, 631-599-0218, a simple email at C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M, at Yahoo, or you can Yahoo me directly at R A L F dot Friedrichs, F R I E D R I C H S, at Yahoo.com, or go on Facebook and messenger me there. Uh, you can find me on clearviews.info, Clear Reform, an open group with 234 members at Clear Reform. Folks, you can also call my helpline if you direly need help now, or you just want to say hello. 844 405. What better phone number than to end with help? 844-405-HELP. Call me. Because the only way I'm going to know how to help you is for you to get in touch with me. Because I don't know you, but everybody seems to be getting to know me. Go to YouTube. Type in Ralph, R-A-L-F, Friedrichs, F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S. And you will find 163 videos of mine touching almost every subject. But if there's a subject that you want me to touch on the video, just email me or call me. If you want to be interviewed, email or call me. You don't have to show your face. We'll do an audio. Email or call me. But it's up to you. A sober today guarantees a better tomorrow. And as always, I tell you every single day, let the sunshine into your heart and your home and include God into your heart and your home. You will have nothing but overflowing positive results. Have a great day, but more importantly, have a sober day and a sober week, and God bless you.